<clears throat> okay, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to get into this topic, which is the rapture of the church and who will face the tribulation period. Now, in order for us to know that question, we have to go to the Bible. So, but for people to understand the whole entire purpose of the tribulation, it has to do with two groups of people. For the Jews and Gentiles, it has nothing whatsoever to do with the nation. It has nothing what to. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the church. Now I want to get into this. What's it called? Let's go to the book of Romans. But before I get into all of this, I want to explain is this. What's it called? Well, Jesus Christ was here on earth. Okay, let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's actually go to the book of Matthew. Okay? Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Matthew 15, verse 24. It says here, this is Jesus speaking. But before I get into all that, I want to start from here. Because during the... During Jesus' time here on earth, He called Gentiles dogs. He called people dogs. Those people that were not Jews. He called them dogs. So... That's why Matthew is not talking whatsoever about the Gentiles. Because Jesus represented himself to Israel as their Messiah. Because if you can if you go here to Matthew chapter fifteen, let me start from let's start from verse twenty. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the regime, re, regime of Turk and Sodom. Look at this. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that regime and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. What did Jesus say? Did Jesus answer her? Let's find out what it says here. But look at this. This is a shocking statement. But he answered her not. Jesus did not answer her. Why is that? Because she's a Gentile. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away. For she cries out after us. But look, this is Jesus right here. But he answered and said, I was not sent. Look at that. I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. What does he mean by that? The children's bread. Jesus is feeding the Jewish people. It's not fair that I take the food that I'm feeding to the sheep of Israel and give it to the Gentiles. Because look, because I don't think she understood. Because she, she thought that Jesus was literally talking about feeding the dogs under the table. Because if you continue reading, look what it says. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs and she said yes Lord yet even little dogs eat the crumbs which fell from their master's table then Jesus answered and said to her O woman great is your faith let it be to you as you desire and her daughter was healed and from that very hour now if you notice, let's go to the, 
Go to Matthew chapter 10, <clears throat> where Jesus sends his disciples out. Okay, go to Matthew chapter 10. Start from verse verse 5. If you notice, Jesus sends his disciples out, which they're all Jews. There are no Christians at this point in time. They were all Jewish followers following Jesus Christ. Jesus sends them out two by two to go witness. But he tells them specifically not to go in the, to witness to the Gentiles. Leave them alone. Why is that? Because Jesus came specifically to the Jews. He came to the Jews. We're going to get into this so that everybody understands the very focus of the tribulation period. So, verse 5, where it talks about Jesus sending his disciples out, right here. These, tw these twelve Jesus sent out and commanded, like he's giving them an order, he's commanding them. Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samarians, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely given. So it says clearly there that Jesus told them to go to the sheep of Israel. Let's read it again, where it says, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You see, he's preaching to the Jews. He's telling them clearly. You see, there was no church here yet. So, but all through the Bible, Jesus is clearly saying, repent, repent, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. <clears throat> because if you go to Ma if you go to Matthew chapter thirteen, where it says clearly in verse nine, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. You see, there's no mention of the church, no mention of the Holy Spirit, etc. <clears throat> because he's talking clearly to the Jewish people. But look what the disciples ask him. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the what? The kingdom. The kingdom. Talking about the thousand year reign millennial kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. And in Matthew chapter 13, verse... 30, talking about the wheat and the tares, clearly talking about the second coming, where it says, Matthew 13, verse 30, where it says, let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first, see, first, that's why we have to pay very close attention to the details and interpret scripture literally because so many people are taking other scriptures that are referring to something else and they're trying to throw it on and make it into the same thing which it can't that's why prophecy today most of it is being preached wrong and some of it is not pre being preached at all many people are being silent and not preaching on prophecy which is not good because God wants us to know the glorious future that is ours and he's told us so I want to get into this at that time of at the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers first realize that first what's he going to tell them to do first gather together the terrors the terrors and bind them in barn to burn them they're going to be burned burn them but look at this but Gather the wheat into my barn. 
the wheat, the tares and the wheat, the saved and the lost. Now, what is that talking about? Now, we have to understand this. We have to go to Matthew chapter 24. But there's something very significant here. Because Jesus is talking to the Pharisees all through here. All these things that he said that would come upon this generation. But he says here, <clears throat> Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wing, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. Your house is left to you desolate. Jesus was foreseeing what was coming in 70 A.D. when Titus, the Roman general, sieged Jerusalem, destroyed the city, and attacked the temple and did not leave one stone left upon another but what does he say afterwards for I say to you you shall see me no more till you say blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord now I want to go try to find something in the Gospel of Luke because Jesus says it has been hidden from you so I want to try to find that part it's in the book of Luke somewhere, I believe. The Gospel of Luke. I don't know if it's in 18. It's within you. Then you should say that the days will... Okay, maybe it's 18, maybe. I'm going to try to find it here, because I want to get this. So people can understand. The kingdom of God to the... I say to you, there is one who... Okay... Maybe it's chapter 19. Let me see here. I think it's verse I think it's Luke chapter 19. It has to be. Okay, right here. It's in Luke chapter 19. I'll start from verse 42. Okay? Luke chapter 19, verse 42. Saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden. See? They are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will bind and em embark around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and leave you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in one they will not they will not leave in you one stone upon another. Because you did not know the time of your visitation. Because you didn't... You see that? Because you did not know the time of your visitation. So if they would have accepted Jesus Christ right there, none of that stuff would have happened to them. The time of your visitation. So it says clear that these things have been hidden from them. Who is Jesus? <clears throat> so, all through the Bible, Jesus is representing himself as the Messiah to the Jewish people. Like what he says to the woman at the Samaritan, at the, at the well. She says, I know when the Messiah comes, he'll tell us everything. He says, I am he who is speaking with you now. 
So. The Jews rejected Jesus. But I want to get back to Matthew. What we were talking about in Matthew chapter 13. About the tares and the wheat. Let's get into it. Okay. Matthew chapter 24. Jesus is answering their question. Because they asked him. What shall be the sign of thy coming. And of the end of the age. You see the Jews require a sign. I think that's in. Somewhere in Corinthians it says that. In the 12. It's somewhere in Corinthians where it says that. So, Jesus is giving them signs. What will be leading up to my second coming? He says, for there will be wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, false Christ, false prophets, nations shall rise against nation. And it goes on. He, he's this is <clears throat> this is not talking to the church. The church was not even born yet. He's talking to Jewish followers, Jewish believers. This is not referring to the church. This is Jesus referring to God's program that is planned for the Jews in the near future. Because he goes on. He's talking about what it will be like leading up to his second coming. Where verse. Um, 15 he talks about the abomination of desolation if you notice what he's talking about here therefore when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place whoever reads let him understand spoken of by Daniel the prophet you see that's a confirmation that it's the 70 the week there's one more week left for Israel 69 weeks have already passed and there's one more week left. Daniel talks about the abomination. And he's clearly talking to the Jews here. When you see the abomination of desolation. Referring to. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet. It's clearly indicating. The 70th week of Daniel. One more week left. Which is a period of seven years. Because many people. Many people. Uh, are confused mistakenly like I said before many people are preaching it wrong or they're mistakenly and they think it's a rapture but they don't understand there's nothing to do whatsoever with a rapture it's all leading up to signs 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 leading up to the second coming because Jesus clearly says right here let's start from here immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heavens. Okay, wait, in the, okay, wait, immediately after the tribulation of those days. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then... The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Then, look, then he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other, to the other. You see, they're angels that are gathering. And yet, Jesus, it says in uh, John chapter 14, Jesus says clearly that if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and what? And receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you also may be. In this verse, there's no mention of a translation being happening. There's no mention of the dead being raised first. There's no mention of the living being caught up. 
None of that. It's a gathering. It's totally a different thing than what we see in the rapture. And there's certain things that still have to unfold. And yet the Bible says clearly the rapture will happen suddenly and without warning. And it's imminent. It's imminency. It's right here where it says. But of that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. This is clearly talking to the second coming. That's why Jesus says, you don't know the day or the hour. So make sure that you're watching for signs. Don't let yourself get caught off guard not being aware of the signs that I come suddenly when you don't expect it. He says, look, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For, for as the days before the flood, they were... They were They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And what? And did not know until the what? Until the flood came and, see, the flood came and took, took them all away. You see that? Where was Noah? Noah was in the ark. Who was the one that was taken? Those that were outside of the ark, they were taken. Look, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So Jesus is saying, that's exactly what's going to happen at my second coming. Just as the flood took all the people away, when I return, one's going to be taken and the other's left. So the one that is taken is taken in judgment. The one that is left is left to enter into the millennium. Let's get into this. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be guarding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So it's going to be a time. That's why he's given signs to watch. Because if you're not paying attention, because there's only seven years at that covenant, when that covenant is signed, the seven-year covenant treaty that is signed with the nation of Israel and her neighbors, if you're not aware of the timeline, it's going to cut you off guard. So I don't want you to be like that. So watch for the signs, because if you're not watching, I will come unexpectedly. When you do not expect it. So the one that is taken is taken in judgment. Because if you go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 28, he says clearly, for wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. And if you go to uh, Luke, because it explains this in the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 17, because the disciples are asking Jesus, where, Lord? Like, where are, where is the body... Where are the ones that have been taken? Where did they get taken to? That's in Luke chapter 17. I'll start from verse 35. Two women will be guarding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. So the one that is taken is really put to death. How are they put to death? At the judgment of the nation. Because chapter 25 explains where they were gathered. Remember, the wheat and the tares. This is referring to the second coming here. Because it says clearly, Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered. You see, all the nations will be gathered before him. He will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goat. You see, this is clearly talking about at the second coming, which clearly shows that there was no rapture that occurred 
because if a rapture did occur, the rapture would have accomplished that separation. But there is no separation here. There's no mention of the dead being raised. There's no mention of the living being translated. It's a gathering to a place of judgment. Who will enter the millennium and who will not enter the millennium? But just the fact that they're, they're, they're mixed up, that they need to be gathered and divided, separated, put them in order, put the righteous on one side and the wicked on the other side. That's where we're going to see it right here. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate them one from another as a, as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. They enter into the millennium. And what does he say to the wicked? Verse 41. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And then verse 46 also talks about this. Where it says, And these will go away into everlasting punishment. But I'll start from 45. Then he will answer them, saying, Surely I say to you, as much as you did it, did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The wheat enter into the millennium. The tares are thrown into hell. Exactly what Jesus said in Matthew 13, the angels would cast them there. This is what it's talking about. There's no rapture indication whatsoever. But even if there was a rapture, there would be nobody left to populate the millennium. Therefore, you cannot have a millennium. And there's just so many things that does not line up with Scripture. And it's all talking about Israel. Israel. Is, guess what I want to get into? Okay, let's get into this right now. Okay. Jesus came to the house of Israel, he presented himself as the Messiah, they rejected him, and then the Apostle Paul came along, Paul was preaching to the uh, to the Jews, they, was, they were accusing him as blasphemy, and all these other things, so what did he say? Well, Paul said, you stiff necks, so Paul left, so God called Paul to preach to the Gentiles. He said, I'm going to the Gentiles. So God has left Israel aside for now. And God has focused on the Gentiles. He's called the Gentile people for his name's sake. He's called a Gentile people. He, he, he went towards the Gentiles, which are those that are, are non-Jews. He's brought them in. He's called himself a bride. He's called himself a church. Because the church was born on the day of Pentecost. And then later on, during Paul's conversion, God gave him a revelation. Because there were still mysteries that were, were, that were revealed. That's why Jesus said in John, if we go to John chapter 16, verse 12, it clearly says, 16, verse 12, says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them now. So, that was later on. He had mysteries that nobody knew about. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery, something that was never taught ever before. It's a new revelation that God revealed to, to Paul. It's a new revelation that's never been taught ever before. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. But it doesn't say when. It just says we'll be changed. So it doesn't say when, but we know that it will happen sometime before the arrival of the Antichrist. Because the Bible is very clear that once the restrainer is taken out, then and only then, 
can the Antichrist be revealed, and we are not appointed unto wrath. We're to be waiting for his son from heaven, who rescues us from the wrath to come, etc. But this is very important. <clears throat> God has left the Jews aside for now. Okay? He's been he's been building himself a church. Because Paul clearly says right here, <clears throat> where he's telling them, I do not want you to be ignorant. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in, lest you should be wise in, in your own opinion that what that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in and so all Israel will be saved as it is written the deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away godless ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins, you see, once the full number comes in, when that last Gentile soul gets saved, that completes the church, when that last number comes in, only God knows the last number, the next, the last number that comes into the body of Christ, once that number is full, we're leaving, and then God's going to focus his attention back on the nation of Israel, God's attention has roughly been upon the Gentile that he's called for his name, for his own name, which is the church. You see, in the Old Testament, they didn't see the church age. Because that was a mystery. That was a new revelation. They didn't know anything about that. And all through the Old Testament, where it's referring to the day of the Lord, the time of judgment, the time of Jacob's trouble, the church is not mentioned because it's clearly for the nation of Israel. And isn't it significant that Jesus says in Matthew, when you see the abomination of spoken of by Daniel the prophet, he's referring back to Daniel. That has nothing to do with us. We go by the epistles. That's all referring to Jewish people. Because there's three people in the Bible. Jews, Gentiles, and the church. So all, all the promises do not refer to the same people. They refer to different groups of people. And God has a different plan for Israel and another plan for the church. But the tribulation period is clearly for the Gentiles, Gentile nations, unbelieving, unbelieving nations, and the nation of Israel. The scripture makes that very clear for it. That's what people have to understand. That's why in Daniel it says, it says that the... Uh, Seventy weeks are determined. Okay, let me get there. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. <clears throat> Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transactions, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, to still have vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy is determined upon the Jews and the holy city which is Jerusalem and isn't it significant if you go to the book of Revelation chapter 7 because all the way down through church history it has been our duty to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to all the nations of the world as Jesus said in Acts he said you what's it called what he said to his disciples. Wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father which you've heard from me. For John baptized you with water, but many days from now I shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power, and you'll be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, and to the ends of the earth. But yet, if you go to Revelation chapter 7, Something dramatic has taken place. Because the church is mentioned in chapter 1 where God is showing... That, where God is showing... Because <clears throat> Daniel didn't see the, the, the seals and the trumpets and the, the, the vials and the, bull, the bulls. Which is the bulls. The bulls are the vials. It's the same thing. He didn't see the judgment. So Daniel and Revelation unlocks 
it's the same thing. But God revealed the, the history of the church, the church age, since the day of Pentecost. Because you write down the things which you saw, which is past, and write down the things which are, which was present, and the things that will be hereafter, which is future. Because you see the mention of the church 19 times in the book of Revelation, and yet something happens in chapter 4 where the church just drops out. There's no more mention of the church. It all seems like, it doesn't seem, it is, if you read it very carefully, it's all referring back to the nation of Israel. Because I said, in Revelation chapter 7, you have 144,000 Jews. Now, where in the world is the church? She's not there. Because it's been our duty for all these times. Because these people are preaching to the whole world. Because look, Revelation chapter 7 where it says, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of what? The children of Israel were sealed. Were sealed. They were sealed. They're not going to be harmed. They're going to be protected supernaturally. Yet there's no mention of the church being sealed. Because we're not here. It's very clear on that subject. And then after, if you go down to verse 9, there's a great multitude that gets saved. By the preaching of the 144,000, you have the two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11, and then in chapter 14, you have angels pronoun pronouncing the gospel. That would be nonsense if, you know, why is all this? Why do you have 144,000? It's going back to as it was in Old Testament times. God worked by raising up people. He has two witnesses, the prophets, and like angels were working as well in the Old Testament as messengers. And yet that's exactly what we have. If you go to Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, where it says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give Glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him. Talking about the second coming. Because with the second coming, it's going to be dealing specifically with sin. It says Jesus is coming back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God, and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, etc. That's why it's going to be an awful time. God's going to judge this world. At the, well, his judgments, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls will be poured out. It's talking about a literal... That's his judgment being poured out. But when Jesus literally returns, he's going to judge people. Even though his judgment is being poured out, he's going to judge them. Like those people that are not going to enter into the millennium will be cast into hell. Like what it says here, if you go to the book of Jude again. Let's go to the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 14, where it says here, Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied concerning about these men. Also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of the saints to accuse judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them all of their ungodly deeds. So the scripture is very clear that the church will not be present during the tribulation period. That's a different time of that's God's wrath being poured out, and yet God's wrath already fell on Jesus, and we are forgiven. Because there's a false teaching going around, which I believe is, a, is an assault about the post tribber saying, we need to go through the tribulation because, you know, we need to be made pure. We need to purge our sins away. That is an assault. You're not going to get any more pure than you are now. There's nothing that can make you more pure than the blood of Jesus Christ. For you to say that you need a more to be more perfection, and that's only through tribulation and all that, that's an assault on Jesus Christ, the one that you say that you you love so dearly. Because look at this, in, in the book of Hebrews, it says clearly that Jesus purged their sin. There's nothing else. That's self-righteousness. That's the teaching of Catholicism, then. <clears throat> God's word is clear. Jesus said, it is finished. God's wrath fell upon Jesus, so it doesn't have to fall on us. In the very purpose for the tribulation is God pouring out his wrath upon the nation of Israel and on the Gentile nation. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the church whatsoever. But I want to read this. 
where it talks about Jesus purging our sin. Who being the brightness of his glory and the expression image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sin sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high so only the blood of Jesus Christ can purge your sin like the song what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me white as snow nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow that you know the song and that is clear so people by saying that we need to go through the tribulation to purify ourselves, that is an assault on what Jesus did at the cross. That is a lie. Because look at the thief on the cross. Jesus said, because he's forgiven, he's been, he's been washed. Today, surely I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. The Bible is very clear. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ he's forgiven you past, present, and future. This is a different period. A special time period for Gentiles and the nation of Israel that's why it's called the time of Jacob's trouble so I want to get into this and then I want to close after this here okay guys so let us get into this and then we're gonna close right after okay and the Lord your God will afflict all of these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you, who persecute you, and shall again obey the Lord and obey all his commandments which I commanded you today. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 78. God's purpose for the tribulation, the seven year, 70th week of Daniel, resolves around his plan for Israel and does not include an earthly presence for the church. Why? Because God's plan for Israel, unfinished at this point in history, when the, when the role of the church is complete, she'll be taken as a complete body to heaven in <clears throat> an instant at the rapture. This will clear the way for a restoration and repaint of progress toward the completion of our sovereignty Lord's plan for his elect nation, Israel. The tribulation focuses on Israel. The Bible teaches that the tribulation is a time for Israel, restoration, and conversion. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29 to 30. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3 to 11. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10 and 1. While the church will experience tribulation in general during this present age John chapter 15 verse 18 to 25 and uh, John 16 verse 33 to 2 and 2 Timothy 3 10 to 13 she is never mentioned as participating in Israel's time of trouble which includes the great tribulation the day of the Lord and the wrath of God granted solution explained the tribulation does not deal with the church at all but with the perfection of Israel it is not the time of the church's trouble but the time of Jacob's trouble the difference of the tribulation is primarily Jewish this fact is borne out by Old Testament scriptures Deuteronomy 40 Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 30, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7, Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 37, Deuteronomy, or Daniel chapter 12 verse 1, Zechariah chapter 13 verse 8 to 9 by the Olive of Discourse of Christ, Matthew 24 verse 9, 26, and by the book of Revelation itself, Revelation chapter 7 verse 4 to 8, 12 to 1 to 2 17 etc it concerns Daniel's people the coming of false messiah the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom fight on the 
flight on the Sabbath, the temple and the holy place, the land of Judea, the city of Jerusalem, the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, the son of Moses, signs in the heavens, the covenant with the beast and the sanctuary and the sacrifice and the abomination of the temple of the temple rental these all speak of Israel and clearly discern that the tribulation is legally a time when God deals with his ancient people prior to their entrance into the promised kingdom the many Old Testament prophecies yet to be fulfilled for Israel further indicate a future time when God will deal with this nation. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 1 to 6, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 8 to 10, etc. The church is absent from the tribulation. Not one of Old Testament passages on the tribulation refers to the church. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29 30 Jeremiah 30 verse 4 to 11 Daniel chapter 8 verse 24 to 27 12 verse 1 to 2 nor does in nor does the New Testament ever speak of the church in relation to the tribulation Matthew 13 verse 30 39 42 48 50 24 15 31 and first Thessalonians Chapter 1, verse 9 to 10 is talking about us. We deliver us from the wrath to come. Except as present in heaven. Exactly. Except as present in heaven. Such silence speaks loudly in support the pre-trib portion, especially when expen with clear statements that promises her exhibition from that time. Romans 5, 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 to 10 <clears throat> and then 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 9 Revelation 3:10 note the clear promise to the church of Revelation 3:10 because you have kept my word of my perseverance I also will keep you from the hour of testing the hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth If pre-tribulationism is indeed <clears throat> the teaching of Scripture, then we would ex ex expect that passage dealing with the tribulation would constantly make no mention of the church. This is exactly what we find. However, Israel is mentioned often throughout these texts. As Dr. Robert has studied the New Testament book of Revelation chapter 4 verse 19 which gives the most detailed overview of the seven-year tribulation in all the Bible he has shown the following however there is a strange silence of the term in chapter 4 to 19 that fact is especially noteworthy when you constantly that the absence with its figuring presence in <clears throat> the first three chapters one good reason for this phenomena is that the absence of the true church and true evangelical church in the seven year preceding the second coming the true believer of the church have gone into the presence of Christ in heaven before the onset of the events of the seven year yeah, seven year period the church is not mentioned during the seals trumpets and bowls judgments because the church is not here during the outpouring of these of these three judge of judgment three tribulation on a Christ rejected world another purpose for the tribulation is that it is a time of God's wrath upon a Christ rejected world and a time of, of revenge for Gentile treatment of Israel moreover it is evident that the tribulation also occurs uh, concerns 
God's judgment upon Christ rejecting Gentile nations. Babylon, which made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, Revelation chapter 14, verse 8, shall herself be innerly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. Revelation 18, verse 8, <clears throat> the cities of the nations shall fall, after which Satan shall be bound that shall deceive the nations. So, more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Revelation chapter 20 verse 3. God's judgment falls likewise upon individual wicked, the kings of the earth, the great man, and the mighty, every bound man and every free man. Revelation 6 15 to 17. It falls upon all who blaspheme the name of God and repent not to give him glory. Revelation 16 verse 9. Wicked man, godless nation, suffering Israel, these may all be found in Revelation 6 to 18, but one looks in vain for the church of Christ, which is his body, until he re reaches the 19th chapter. There she is seen as the heavenly bride of Christ, and when he returns to earth to make his enemies his footstool, she is seen returning with him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, 13 to 4. 13 to 4. Such a time of judgment. <clears throat> such a time of judgment does not require the church who has not rejected Christ to be present. With the church in heaven during the tribulation, it is God's focus to be on Israel as his divine instrument through which he acts this program was predicted by the Lord before Joshua and Israel ever entered the promised land notice the prediction <clears throat> then the Lord your God will restore you from captivity and have compassion on you and will gather you again from all the people where the Lord your God has scattered you Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 3 and the, and the Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possess and will and you and you shall possess Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 5 and the Lord your God will afflict all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you who persecute you and you shall again obey the Lord and Obey all his commandments which I command you today. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 7 to 8. Zechariah speaks of the Lord's repentance upon the nations as a time when the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In that day I will set about to destroy all the nations that came against Jerusalem. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 8 and 9. Once again the focuses upon Israel in the case Jerusalem not the church the book of Revelation provides a great description of God's judgment upon unbelieving world often called earth dwellers as God protects his judgments upon the earth dwellers John records pauses pauses by our Lord as he advises advises the response of mankind to his judgment before going into the next pause it is as if the Lord inspects a series of judgments and then serves the landscape to see if like Nineveh in the days of jo Jonah there is repentance so that he can spend persecution of the war with the UN like Nineveh in the days of Joshua, Jonah, the earth dwellers do not relate in the week of the wrath of the Lamb. Revelation 6 verse 16. So our Lord pronounces to the next pause of his battle. Every step of the way, the earth dwellers would not repent of the works of their hands. Revelation chapter 9 verse 20. Instead of worshiping Christ, the earth 
the earth and those who dwell in it worship the first beast, Revelation 13, 12, instead of repentance, they blaspheme God, Revelation 16 to 21. Finally, all the nations were deceived, Revelation 18, 23, resulting in the satanic nation that the armies of the world must march against Jerusalem, God's city, and Israel, his people. This result in the basics for the second coming of Christ, which is to res rescue Israel from the world's armies who are striking out at God's invading his people. Such a scenario does not demand or require the church and so she will not be there. We can see that the purpose of the tribulation resolves around God's plan for Israel, not the church. Okay, conclusion. Only pre-tribulationism pre is able to give full important, import to tribulation terms like the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, as a passage specifically starting that the tribulation is for Jacob, Israel. John of Oliver includes, Nevertheless, are tribulation saints given the special and practical promise given to the church in the present age? The nature of the church is considered Israel, therefore becomes argument supporting the pre-tribulation the nature of the church is contrast to Israel, therefore becomes an argument supporting the preaching of view. Since God's purpose for the tribulation to restore Israel, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3 to 10, and judge the Gentiles, Jeremiah 30, verse 11, it is clear that the pur this purpose does not include the church. This is one of the reasons why she will be taken to heaven before this time. The church's hope is a heavenly one, not practical in the climax and restoration of God's plan for his earthly people, Israel. Maranatha. So, brothers and sisters out there, just be ready to meet the Lord because we're not going to be here and we see all the signs right before us right now the tribulation period we are very close to this from happening but before all that can happen because we're to be looking for the blessed hope which is the rapture of the church so my brothers and sisters out there live ready stay ready be ready and keep telling people about the uh, about Jesus Christ about his saving knowledge about what he did for them on the cross and uh, this is all i got to say, and uh, God bless you all, and uh, thanks for watching, and God bless you all, and keep looking up. The King is coming very, very shortly, and this is all i got to say, and God bless.